Praise the Lord. Blessings, everyone. Welcome to the Shield of Faith Christian Center of Rancho Cucamonga and our Sunday worship service. This is a day that the Lord has made and we'll rejoice and we'll be glad in it. We're delighted that you're here with us today. Those of you that are here in the building, those of you that are streaming the service, we welcome you. And we're so delighted that you're a part of the Shield family. Now today God's going to speak to us and he's going to give us encouragement. He's going to give us words of wisdom and we're going to give him praise and we're going to give him glory and all that he's due. God has done something in your life this week. He's done something in your life this week that absolutely demands that you give him glory for it. And so this is our opportunity to just say thank you, to lay down all the stuff that we brought in with us, all the stresses, all the issues, and just say, God, I thank you for all the blessings that you gave me on this week. I'm glad to be here. Are you glad to be here today? This is just a time for us to reflect and to think and to thank God for all that he's done for us. So we invite you to join in with us as we worship Join in with us in the word. Be excited. Be passionate. Our pastor's been preaching about the excitement that should be in, involved when you come to church. You should be excited that you're able to hear something from God. I said you should be excited that you're able to hear from God every week that we come together. So we're so glad that you're here. Please make yourselves feel at home and comfortable worshiping in any way that you feel that you need to worship. Don't leave here without getting God, all that God has for you because God wants to bless you. At this time, we're going to have a reading from the scripture. Can you please greet Bishop Marty as she comes to lead us in our scripture? And after that, we'll have prayer. Thank you so much, Pastor Matt. And while you're standing, if you could please, in your Bible, turn to Psalms chapter 40. And we'll be reading verses 1 through 6. Psalms chapter 40, verses 1 through 6. And we'll read it together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 40, verses 1 through 6. Let's begin. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine eyes, my, excuse me, mine ears, hast thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. We're going to ask Elder Jimenez to come and lead us in our opening prayer. And saints, I want to admonish you. I want to encourage you to pray for this ongoing conflict in Israel. It is escalating. It is getting much more severe and we have to pray because lives are being lost souls are in the balance families are being torn apart children are dying so please please pray remember to pray remember to pray throughout the week thank you god bless you Praise the Lord, everyone. We're going to do something different this morning. We're going to ask if everyone would please come up to the altar as we open up this morning with prayer. If you're able to walk, if you're not, you could stay where you're at. But those that are able to 
Please join us this morning as we come into the altar as a unified body of Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. As your people come forward, Father, thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. All minds on heaven. If there be any among us at this time that may have an unspoken prayer request, let it be known by the raising of your hand at this time. Amen. Let us all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, as we come before your presence, Father, as a unified body gathered here together this morning, Father, we come in your presence, Father, with thanksgiving, Lord. We come in your presence, Father, seeking you. Open up our hearts, minds, and spirits, God, as we unify as a body of Christ, crying unto you this morning, Father, that you would touch every individual gathered here at the altar. Father, that you would lift any burden, O oh God, that you set their minds free, Father, that you heal, O oh God, and open up their hearts to receive your word. Father, we pray for the unity of your spirit. Come into this place, Father. Let your spirit rest, root, and abide from the pulpit to the door, God. Touch your people, Father. Set captives free, Lord God. Save this morning. Deliver this morning, Father. Reclaim, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Remember your people, Father. God, we pray for Israel. We pray for every conflict, God, that you have your way, Father. You move upon the world, oh God. Let your prophetic word go forward, God, and touch every heart, of every mind, every leader, oh Father, and set forth deliverance, oh God. Bring order once again, Father, to your people, Father. And God, as we've unified this morning at this altar, Father, touch your people. Bless the worship leaders. Bless the organist, God. And most of all, God, send your word this morning, Father. Anoint the apostle, God. Give him your word, Father. Let us be receptive, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your way this morning, God. And we'll be mindful to give you the praise and you the glory, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. If you know that the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever, come on, open up your mouth and bless him. Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh. From every nation, from generation, oh, said we worship you. Hallelujah! Yeah, we worship you for who you are. Yeah, we worship you. So people from every nation, from generation, yeah, we worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus, for who you are. Yeah, we worship you. Jesus, 
serve a good God hallelujah hallelujah surely we serve a good God hallelujah has he been good to you has he been good to you has he been good to you he's been so good to me and it's not of any goodness of my own I definitely do not deserve his goodness I always tell people inherently I'm a terrible person we all are 
because we're wrapped in this terrible thing called flesh. And if we did everything that this flesh wanted, whew, just think of every, every crazy thought, every ill desire, if you gave into it. But I thank God that he loves me in spite of knowing what's in me. He chose to love you. He chose to save you. Knowing every bad thought, every bad desire, every ill thing that you would do in your life. God has been good to me. Hallelujah. Has he been good to you? We're going to tell him that he's good. Hallelujah. 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 We give you praise, Jesus. The song says, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, because you've been so good me sing Lord you are good Lord you are good you've been so good you've been so good Lord you are good Lord you are you've been better you've been better than good I can't break you I owe you I owe you my life I can't break you even if I try even if Come on, let's stay there. Sing, Lord, you are good. Oh, you've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better. You've been better than good. I can't praise you I owe you my life. Come on, tell them. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Sing, Lord, you are good. Come on, tell her. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can. I owe you my life. I can. Even if I try. Oh, God, you've been so good. Take it up one more time. Say, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Oh, Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can. I owe you my life. I can. Even if. been better than good to me so many doors you open so many ways you made so many times you healed me yeah you've been better than let me say this real quick a lot of times when we talk about healing we automatically think that it's something physically like sickness but God can heal your finances he can heal your mind he can heal your unforgiveness he can heal your family there's all sorts of healing. So when you, sing, when you sing this, I want you to think about the healing that God's done for you. So many doors you open. 
so many ways you made so many times you healed my mind you've been better than good to me so many doors you opened so many ways you made so many times you healed my family yeah you've been better than good to me so many doors so many ways you made so many times you healed me You've been better than good to me. So many doors. So many ways. So many times you healed me. Hey, you've been better than good to me. So many doors. So many ways. So many times. Yeah. You've been better than good to me. So many doors you opened. So many ways you made. You've been better than good to me. 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 Better than good to me. Better than good to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been better, better, better than good to me, yeah. Cause you've been so good, Jesus. You've been so good, Jesus. You've been good, Jesus. You've been good, Jesus. You've been good, Jesus. You've been good, Jesus. So good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good. Say so good, so good. Let that praise up. Come on, everybody. 
Come on, let that praise out. Come on and bless the Lord the way your heart wants to give him glory. You want to give him love. Come on, let that praise out. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you. If you love him, don't be shy. Don't hesitate. Clap your hands. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, come on and give the Lord glory. Come on, everybody, take just the next 60 seconds and let God know that you love him. Come on, you appreciate him. You thank him. Amen. Someone say hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. Come on, if you love the Lord, somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Lord, you've been good. You've been good. You've been good. You've been so good. Oh, you've been so good. You've been so good. Come on, somebody. You've been so good to me. Come on, give him one more great praise. Come on, that's almost good enough. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I called unto the Lord. He heard me. Come on, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord, somebody praise him. Somebody praise him in here this afternoon. God, we love you. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise him in that other language. Come on. Praise him in that other tongue. Shandorabosaya. God, we love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. When I think of your goodness, all you've done for me, my soul cries out. My soul cries out. My soul cries out. My soul cries out. Come on, come on, come on, open up. Come on, open up. God, we love you. Come on, it's all right to praise him. It's all right to praise him. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go, thank you, singers, into the house of the Lord. Get your Bible as you're standing. I'm so grateful for you this afternoon. Thank God for the presence of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the beautiful worship that you just offered to the Lord. I'm so grateful for each of you. Get your Bible. and We'll lay a foundation in the Word. Second Corinthians chapter 10. We'll lay a foundation in the Word. We'll greet one another. We will organize our business. And then we'll go to the sharing of the word for this afternoon. Thank God for each of you. Second Corinthians chapter 10. And we're going to begin reading uh, just one verse pulled out, maybe two verses. That will be the foundation of our thinking as we reflect on the things of God this afternoon. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. Will you read with me verses 4 and then uh, 5? That's good. All right. Let us read together. I trust that you have it. What does it say? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Our subject this afternoon will be your weapon of praise. Tell somebody, I have a weapon. And then tell them it is a powerful weapon. And then say it is the weapon of praise. Now to go with that scripture, let's go to uh, let's go to Psalm 149 and put that with that. Psalm 149. And we'll put those scriptures together here. We're going to read that entire chapter, verses 1 through 9. All right, Psalm 149. And you'll read with me verses 1 through 9. All right, let's read. What does it say? 
Praise you the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Are you all reading? You, you, you sound quiet. Read real nice and loud and strong. We're excited about the word. Amen? All right, nice and loud. What does it say? Praise you the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be what? Joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Help me for a minute. Touch somebody. Tell them I've got a praise in my mouth. Tell them you, you, you know, you sit by the wrong person. Tell them I am not the quiet one. Tell somebody I've got a praise in my mouth. The high praises. God be in their mouth. Verse number seven, what does it say? What do we do with that praise? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains, their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor of all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Amen for that. Amen for that word. Now one more passage we'll go to in Second Chronicles. Apostle, I knew where you were going. That's all right. You should know because you know your Bible very well. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Your weapon of praise. We're going to begin reading at verse 18. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 18. All right, let's read 18 down to 22. We'll read together. All right, let's read. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord. What were they doing? Worshiping the Lord. Go ahead. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with what kind of voice? With a loud voice on high. Go ahead. Verse 20. They rose up early in the morning, went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. As they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Last verse. When they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments, against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Can you say amen? Father, bless the word that you will give us on this afternoon. We thank you. We're here to hear from heaven. We know there is a word of direction and a word that is relevant and useful that will bring us to victory. And so we honor you today. Anoint the word and we beat back the powers of darkness in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. All right. Now, would you greet one another before you take your seat? Don't sit down yet. Everybody greet, greet about 10 people and smile at someone and make sure that they feel welcome. Thank you so much. In the house of the Lord. Amen. All right. Let somebody know we honor Bishop Robert Durgan, who is here with us on today. Amen. Bishop Robert is the leader of uh, All About Christ Ministries. We honor Bishop Durgan as he is here with us worshiping on this afternoon. I'm grateful for all of you. Everybody greet everybody. Everybody greet everybody. Everybody greet everybody. We're not in a hurry. Amen. We're just one body fitly joined together. God bless you, Bishop Durgan. God bless you, saints. God bless you. I'm so glad that you're here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
good. Thank God for you. So glad to meet you. Those that did not know each other before, uh, you do now. And you're making each other welcome. Amen. Letting everybody know that you're in the right place. Welcome to the house of the Lord. And then you may be seated after you've greeted one another. Feel uh, free to take your seat. I am going to reposition you today. I'm going to move them, Bishop Marty, as I often do. I'm going to reposition you. So would you help me with that? Can I get those on my right to come in to the center? Those on my left to come in. Thank you, Brother Josh and family. I appreciate you all, Deacon O'Neill. I appreciate you doing that so much. Thank you for uh, acceding to that request. The Lord's going to bless you. If you don't mind, Brother Miles, if y'all will come on in to the center, if you don't mind, if you don't mind. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It just gives us a bit more uh, conducive uh, environment. And I'm grateful for all of you that are here on today. Let's go through our business. And so then after that, we can go to God's word. So would you pick up the, uh, the simple bulletin, uh, all right? And uh, if you look at the front of it, dear saints, this is the one we're on. If everybody could get it and come in with me. If y'all don't mind, Brother Nathan, can y'all come on in? You and Sister Eliana, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I really would like for you to do that. All right, the convention is coming up. Look at it there. The convention registration. Now listen as I say to you uh, that many of you did register Give me just a bit on it, Brother uh, Dustin. It's beautiful, but let me really get their attention. Many of you did a beautiful job registering on last Sunday for the convention. Now, the convention is coming up in the first week in June, and you all know that. Uh, you've got this flyer that advertises uh, the convention. We just talked to our African uh, bishop uh, this morning uh, with great reports from Africa. People will be traveling from Africa, though he will not be here but many will be coming. All right, so the convention is coming up. So many of you registered last Sunday. If you did not register, it is my goal that every member of my church would register because it's only $20. Somebody say $20. All right, so it's a very small amount just to show your loyalty and your love. So the booth is in the hallway. As you go out today, please register. All right, now the second bullet point is convention seminars. Look on the back of this, please. Can I get your attention on the back of it? And you'll see all the wonderful seminars available for you. Here's some of the things, and there'll be more added, I suspect. Starting from the bottom up, marriages that work, that's important. Supporting your pastor and keeping unity in your church. Then pointing your youth and children to Jesus, that's an important seminar. The emotional health of the believer, amen. We want to stay happy in Jesus. Can I get an Amen. All right, so we have to know how to do that. So in the convention, you're going to have all these wonderful teachings, a clear vision of the last days, how to be ready for the coming of the Lord, what we believe, why we believe it. That's important. And then there's one called preparing to pastor. Some of you, God has called you to ministry. You're going to be pastors of your own congregation in the Lord's time. And so we're going to prepare you for that with your pastor's permission. And then the top one is a very important one. If you look at it there, it talks about how to minister the Holy Ghost, how to help people uh, get set free from demonic things and ready to be saved. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Praise God. So those seminars are for you. There will be a whole different set of seminars for the bishops and pastors who come from all over the country and around the world. Now, what we're going to do next week, we're going to ask you to, to pre-register for the seminars that you want to be a part of. Maybe you want to be in three or four of them over the course of the three days. So we'll do that. All right? We're not ready to do that today, but next week we will. All right, go back to the front of your bulletin, please. Thanks for your attention. All right, second bullet point is the convention seminars we just talked about. The third bullet point is to remind you of the dates of the convention, the first week in June. And then the fourth bullet point at the bottom I ask if you'd like to help work, make this a great, tremendous spiritual event. Uh, Minister Simeon McGee is the convention coordinator, and he would love to have you. I would love to have you on the convention committee so we can use your brilliance for the glory of God. So if you're willing to help with the convention, please let your heart be open to that. We'd love to have you, and so please do that. Now, if you want to register right now while you're sitting in your seat, Here's the QR code. You can take your phone out now, and you can just swipe your phone over it, 
and you can just go right to the page and you can register for the convention. One of the things I want to make sure you hear me say uh, is that registration is not necessary. It's voluntary. I don't want anyone to think that you can't come to the convention because you did not uh, give the $20 that we would like for you to give. Uh, we never turn anyone away because of lack of finance. That is not something that we would ever do. All right, and then the other thing you probably have here is about the youth department. Let's give God a hand praise for the youth and young adults. All right, Minister Jonathan, and uh, this is his first Sunday back. He's been at home for a couple of weeks being a dad. Come on, give God a hand praise for newborn baby Chloe. Uh, you have not sent me a picture yet, did you? You didn't send? The kid must not look good, y'all. He didn't send anybody a picture. Oh, he says she looks just like her daddy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> God, give God a hand praise for baby Chloe. God bless you. We're happy for you. And Minister London, we're so thankful that baby is here and in excellent health. And we're glad to see you back in the house of the Lord. God bless you. I believe those are all the announcements. Bishop Marty. Yes. Oh, all right, good. Oh, there's a, a video. Is that true? All right, thank you. The media department is letting me know there's a video they're going to show you right now relative to the convention. Then we'll Mary, move right on. Convention. Have you registered yet? Yes. Have you? I'm moving forward in faith. Of course I'm excited for this year's convention. A little louder. It's going to be a pivotal moment in my special journey with the Lord. I'm moving forward in faith. Of course I'm registering for the convention. I'm ready to join hands with God's body and experience the power of unity and worship. You know what our theme is for 2024? It's moving forward in faith. It's the same as this year's convention. Exodus 14 verses 15 and 16 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through on dry land. Moses understood the assignment. By being obedient to the Lord with faith and works, he and Israel would be able to move forward and receive what the Lord had for them. What is faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So what are you hoping to receive from the Lord during this year's convention? Now, we may not always be able to see what God has in store for us, but we must have faith, knowing that he is a faithful and loving God who never breaks his promises. All we have to do is move forward. Whatever it is, have faith, knowing God knows exactly what you need and will always supply it. Prepare and get ready to register on April 7th and May 5th directly after service for our Show the Faith International Convention, which will be on the days June 5th through the 7th. We hope to see you there. That's wonderful. Thank you. Give God praise for the committee. Thank you, Minister Korea, and thank you to all the, uh, the staff that's involved in uh, registration and leading us through registration. I want to encourage you to feel free to take out your phone and uh, share this service if you don't mind doing that. Go to Shield of Faith uh, Media on YouTube. And then you can share it to your friends on Facebook and all over the Internet. That's what I do every Sunday. Some of you see me standing over there before service. What I'm doing, I'm connecting my, uh, my phone to this service and then putting it on my uh, Facebook page. I've got 5,000 Facebook friends, and uh, I think they're friends. I don't know. Uh, but there's 5,000 people, and uh, some of them are probably friends, and some might not necessarily but I share it there. And so I would love for you to take out your phone and share the streaming of this service on, on today. Last Sunday, we talked about uh, Pentecostal fire and noisy praise. And uh, you noticed that we stayed with that subject on Tuesday night. We talked about praise and worship. And I said to you last Sunday that uh, my uh, God-given agenda is to shift our uh, atmosphere and change the level of praise and our understanding of praise and worship and to lift us to another level because praise and worship is such a mighty weapon. You'll notice that the title that we use for the message today is Your Weapon of Praise. Uh, now help me preach. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor you have a powerful weapon. 
Yeah. Praise is a weapon. Worship is a weapon in spiritual warfare. And Paul said, we wrestle against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. So we're in a fight that we did not start, and we're in a fight that we cannot evade. There is a war going on. Jesus told the disciples in uh, St. Matthew chapter 26, while he was praying in the garden, they were asleep. He told them to watch and pray. He wanted them to watch because we must be alert and aware that Satan is fighting you. Satan is fighting you. I want you to win, and I also need you to win because I need you to be strong. Because I'm going to need you to be strong when I go through. And if you're not strong, when I need some help, the help is not going to be there. But if I build you up so you are a conqueror, then when I need some help, I've got some help. Come on, somebody. I need you to touch two or three people. Tell them I want to see you do well. Tell them I want you to be strong because I'm going to need you later. Come on. I need you on my side. I need you on my team. I need you to help me fight those demons. Come on. If you're broke down and I'm broke down, there'll be nobody to help. But honey, if I can help you get in a strong place where you can get a prayer through. Come on, somebody give God a hand. If you can reach God when I need some help, then honey, we can do, come on, somebody. Amen. I, I think we're going to, I think we're going to do all right. I think we're going to, we're going to get the victory that God has for us. Anybody feel victorious in here today? But we need to help one another to know that the battle is winnable. We are not called to be defeated, but we must understand how to fight because we must fight. We have to know how to fight because we're in a fight. And we cannot escape the fight. And the devil is fighting the people of God. And he hates you because you love Jesus. And so Paul writes and talks about the weapons that we have. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the verse that you know, the weapons that we battle with are not carnal. They're spiritual, but they produce natural results. Those who are not spiritual do not believe that spiritual things really affect the natural world. The entire concept of praise, Bishop Marty, it's really counterintuitive. There doesn't appear to be a connection between my circumstances and my worship life. The two things seem to be unrelated. It just seems like life is tough and money is scarce and health is bad and, and my mind is, 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 is all in turmoil and, and I could praise God, but praising won't really fix anything. When I get through praising, I probably won't have any more money and I probably won't feel any better and things are probably not going to change. But the Lord sent me here this afternoon to tell you that there's a relationship between praise and the circumstances in your life. And the enemy doesn't want you to understand understand that your praise is a weapon, that your praise is a mighty tool. And can I tell you, the devil is afraid for you to praise God. The enemy wants you quiet. He wants you to sit. He wants you confused. He wants you to feel as if you can't do anything about anything. But I've got good news for you. When you begin to praise God, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Come on. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Honey, when you get a hold of God, I don't care how much pain you've got in your body, and I don't care how many bills you got on your desk, I, I, I tell you to praise God. I, I challenge you to praise God. When you're sad, you ought to praise God. When you're depressed, you ought to praise God. When you're confused, when you're tempted, I dare you to praise God. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise right now. You didn't come into this house just to sit and be quiet. You came to interact with the living God. And your praise is a great weapon of your victory. Your weapon. Tell your neighbor, that's your weapon. Your weapon. You have an AK-47. You have a spiritual Glock. You've got a great mighty tool to fight with. But the enemy doesn't want you to know what you've got. 
I've got a shotgun somewhere, Bishop Marty. Can I say that? I'm not going to tell them where it is. But I know where it is. And Bishop Marty knows where it is. Touch your neighbor and tell them, you've got some weapons. Tell somebody, you may not understand, but the devil's scared of you. Anybody ready to use your weapons? Anybody know the devil is not going to quit fighting? He's going to come after you as soon as this service is over. He's going to come after you again. But when he comes in, I'm going to open my mouth and start giving God some praise. Lord, I thank you for the victory. I thank you that in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Come on. I thank you that greater are you in me than he that is in the world. I thank you that we are, we are, we are the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. Come on, somebody. Give God a hand. Break. When you open your mouth, I mean, begin to talk to the devil the demons begin to run because the weapons that you fight him with they actually are related to your circumstances whatever you bind on earth gets bound up in the spirit realm when you praise God things happen the carnal servant of Elisha could not see the relationship between the spiritual and the natural. The carnal servant in 2 Kings chapter 6 woke up in the morning. He was terrified because he saw the soldiers, but he did not see the angels. Uh, help, some, help me. Ask somebody, do you see the angels? Amen. How many know the Lord said that there are angels all around you? The angel of the Lord is in camp round about you. Did you realize you're not sitting there alone? You're not in a vulnerable space? Amen. Honey, there are angels around you. He gave the angels charge to keep you in all your way so you won't even dash your foot against a stone. I'm not vulnerable. I'm protected. I'm in a safe place. So I think I'll just relax and trust God and give God a hand. No, I don't see it with my natural eye, but I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. I see things that are invisible. Come on, give God a hand prayer. We look not at the things which are seen, but we're looking at the things which are not seen. My natural eye can't see it, but my spiritual eye can't miss it. Come on, somebody give God a hand prayer. The angel is there. The blessing of the Lord is on me. Come on. I, I, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Honey, I am immersed in the power of the Holy I'm drenched in Holy Ghost anointing. Somebody give God a hand prayer. Honey, the devil's afraid of you. You must know who you are in Christ. You must know. Because the enemy will come in like a flood. But the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. So the unbeliever is living in a world that he's not aware of. He operates in a world that he does not understand. The sinner doesn't know why he feels what he feels. He doesn't know why nothing works in his life. He doesn't know why he goes from one crisis to another, why he's getting more and more uncomfortable and dysfunctional and failure-prone every day. He does not realize the demon spirits that are in the world. We who are saved, we see the things that cannot be seen. Last week, we talked about noisy praise. We, we gave ourselves liberty to praise the Lord in a loud way. We agreed that we are not embarrassed to clap our hands. We reminded ourselves of the uh, Staples Center, now it's a crypto uh, center, I guess, down in Los Angeles. And we talked about where the Rams play and all these places and how when people go there, they give themselves permission to get loud and get excited. And we said that when there's a touchdown or when there's a great athletic endeavor, some kind of accomplishment, a spectacular dunk or something, they give themselves permission to get loud and be demonstrative. And they feel free to do that. And, and, and one encourages another and inspires one another. I've been to those games. I mean, when somebody else jumps up and starts hollering, makes you want to jump up and holler too. But I, I'm telling you, we agreed last week and we still remember it this week that, that when we come to the house of God, I got a right to get excited. Amen. I'm not going to sit there. It's not about a, a slam dunk. Come on, somebody. It's not about a great touchdown pass. 
that I thank God that I once was lost, but now I'm found. And I'm going to come in, and I want to give myself permission to dance and to get excited. I'm going to give myself permission to clap my hands. You ought to clap your hands right now just to let the devil know you're not scared to praise God. You're not afraid to get excited about Jesus. I, I can't find no athlete to get excited about. I love LeBron, but that, that doesn't turn me on. That doesn't get me excited. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus, when I think about what God has done, when I think about the Holy Ghost that's alive down in my life, when I think about what I don't have to do that I used to have to do, somebody give God a hand raise for the God that sets you free from yourself. He sets you free from yourself. So I'm not embarrassed. And I realize the enemy doesn't want me to use my weapon because he knows what happens when I praise God. He wants me to come to church and sit quietly as if it's a shame to praise the Lord. And much more than that, he doesn't want me to take my praise out into the world. You ought to praise God in the supermarket. You ought to praise God riding down the freeway. You ought to praise God in the dentist's office. That's a good place to praise God. When you're getting ready to go get surgery like I did last week, that's a good place in the surgery center. I want y'all to know I was giving God praise while I was getting ready to cut that cataract off my eye. I was saying, thank you, Jesus. I love you. I praise you. I thank you because you're Jehovah Jireh, and it's not just a man working on me, but I've got God who's a healer. He's on my side, and I'm not afraid, and I'm not worried, and I walked in in faith and walked out in victory. Come on. Somebody give God a hand because I've got a weapon and my weapon is to worship the Lord. Come on worship him right now. Some of y'all, you're intimidated right now. Somebody's sad right now. Somebody's mad. Honey, you'll praise the mad off yourself. Come on. You'll praise the lust out of your heart. You'll praise, you'll, you'll praise money in your bank account. Somebody give God praise. I'm not ashamed to praise the Lord. It's my weapon. I said it's my weapon. We have, to give, we have to give ourselves permission. I got it, son. Thank you so much. We have to give ourselves permission to praise God. Many times some people have not been saved a while. They don't know how to praise God. I touch somebody, tell them, you got to loosen up. Tell them, you're too self-conscious. And then tell them this, and you're not that cute. Tell them, you ain't impressing nobody. You may as well give God some glory. Come on. Come on, you may as well, it's all right to clap your hands. You would clap for LeBron James. You would clap for Beyonce. Come on, you would clap for something else foolish. I think I'll clap for Jesus. Come on, somebody. I think I'll give him glory. I think I'll get emotional about him. Yes, I'll do my dance. Come on, give God hand. Yes, I'll, st I'll clap my hands. I'll stamp my feet. Yes, I will. I give myself permission to get excited. If you're so self-conscious that you can't praise God, there's a breakthrough for you. There's a new blessing heading your way. The moment you learn how to praise God, the whole world looks different. I tell you, when, when the devil attacks me and things are bothering me, when I'm sad and confused and feeling alone and just all messed up emotionally. If I can just remember, touch your neighbor, tell them, take your praise home with you. Tell them, it's all right to praise God in here. But ask them, do you know how to take your praise home? Come on, when, thing, when the pressure comes in the marriage, do you know how to take the praise into your house and walk through your house giving God praise? You don't have to be articulate. You don't have to be creative. You can just say, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. God, I trust you. You're wonderful. You're worthy of praise. I adore you. I magnify you. You're my Lord. You're my Savior. I give myself permission to praise God. Touch somebody, tell them I ain't scared. The enemy doesn't want you to know the weapon of praise because praise tears him up. And the scriptures that we use today talk about that. Paul talks about the weapons 
of our warfare. We didn't identify what they are specifically. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, he just talks about them. There are many weapons. There's tongues. There's the blood of Jesus. All right. There's your Bible. There's fellowship. Amen. All these wonderful things. There's fasting. The name of Jesus. All those are our weapons. One of the great weapons that we need to be aware of is a weapon of praise. I use the word praise and worship interchangeably. One could go into some detail trying to distinguish between the two terms, but for our practical purposes, they come down to the same thing. Praise and worship are more or less synonymous. And when we looked at Second Chronicles chapter number 20, we saw the beautiful example that God gave us. We're going to talk about two examples. One of them is in Second Chronicles, the other is in, uh, in uh, Exodus chapter 17. And in Second Chronicles chapter number 20, go there if you can, it tells us of a great uh, disproportionate battle. The children of Israel had 600,000 men and the uh, Moabites and the Ammonites and the inhabitants of Mount Seir came against them. They were a million soldiers. There were a million uh, of the enemy and I think 600,000 of the people of Israel. And the word of God said Jehoshaphat and the people began to fear. They looked at the fact that they were not outfitted to win. Rationally, they had no chance to win under circumstances like that. And so they cried out to the Lord. Amen. That's a good principle. When you're afraid, David said, what time I'm afraid, I will trust in the Lord. The word of God said they cried out to the Lord. The Lord sent a hide to the prophet. He said, the Lord is with you while you be with him. If you turn away from him, he will forsake you. For a long time, said Ahijah, Israel has been without a priest, without a prophet. But now the Lord is offering you uh, some help. And the Lord told uh, Jehoshaphat, don't worry. Just praise me. We read that passage of scripture, 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, verse number 20. They went out in the morning to the wilderness of Tekoa where the enemy was. They went out to the enemy. They did not run from the enemy. They went to the enemy. And what they did was so irrational. They did not have a sword. They did not have a spear. They did not have a gun. Guns weren't invented then. They did not have any weapon. When they went out to face their enemy, outnumbered two to one, they took a tambourine and they took a songbook and they, they said, we're going to go out here and we're going to just go worship the Lord. Come on. I, there's a battle going on, but I'm not going to shoot. I'm not going to cut. I'm not going to cuss nobody out. All I'm going to do is start giving God praise because when you praise God, something actually happens. It's not just emotional venting, but it releases something. Come on, somebody. It releases angels that come down to fight for you. It confuses your enemy. And God told me to tell you, if you'll just trust in the power of praise, if you realize what praise can do, praise wakes God up. Praise puts God in action. Praise brings God where you are. Praise causes God to address your situation. If you want God to do something about what you're going through, I dare you to open your mouth and start giving God praise right now. Lord God, I'm in a jam, but I praise you. I'm under pressure, but I praise you. I could have an emotional breakdown, but instead I praise you because I understand that praise produces results. Somebody that's got it, give God a real praise right now. While you're praising God now, God's working on your situation. God's at the house right now. God's at the bank right now. God's at the doctor's office right now. Somebody give God praise in here. I know the enemy don't want you to do it, but do it just to make the devil mad. Do it just to make the devil upset when they praise the Lord. Jehoshaphat, the children of Israel, words there when they praise the Lord, said the Lord set an ambush among the enemies, the children of Moab and Ammon, they began to fight one another, they began to fight the inhabitants of Mount Seir. When they got through, God released a confusing spirit among them. Their unity vanished. How many would like to see your enemies fight one another? <laughs> All right, y'all not being honest. You're just trying to hide it. 
but 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 God's getting ready. To, God's getting ready to make your enemies turn on each other. Come on, give God a hand. The people that've been trying to undermine you and sabotage you and mess you up and ruin you. God said, "I'm gonna sow discord among your enemies. They'll come out at you one way. They're gonna flee in seven different directions. Come on, give God a hand. Go go, go get them, Lord. I, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna curse them. But Lord, you know what to do while I'm praising you. You know how to fight for me. Go. I don't have to fight back. I, I just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord." When you praise God, God goes into action. When they praise God, God sent a spirit of conflict among them. Wouldn't it be wonderful? I mean, I know the scripture said, love your enemies and all, and I, and I do, sort of. I'm working on that. But wouldn't it be wonderful to see your enemies fight each other? Give you a moment of rest. Out number two to one. But they did not take a gun. They did not take a spear. They did not enter into terror. They just began to praise God. Because Jehoshaphat knew after Ahijah the prophet talked to him, he sensed that praise is a weapon. Come on, some, somebody, let's, let's do some fighting in the spirit right now. Against all those things the enemy's been trying to do. No weapon formed against me. It's, it's going to prosper because I'm fighting with praise. Lord, I thank you. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know when you're going to do it. But I feel an assurance that the word that works in Second Chronicles chapter 20, that same word is working right now in Rancho Cucamonga. Do you all believe this stuff? Come on, give God a hand for you. I'm a spiritual man. I believe in what the word of God shows us. God is trying to show us. He's giving us a revelation. Don't even worry. Don't lose any sleep. Just start praising God. Don't be impatient. Don't get afraid. Just start praising God. Don't try to do anything even about it. Don't even talk back. Don't fight back. Just start praising God. I feel deliverance right now. Somebody give God a great praise. I feel deliverance right now. While we're in here praising God, I praise God. It's not wasted. Our praise is producing something. God is responding. I feel victory right now. Somebody help me praise God. I feel deliverance. I feel joy. I feel God moving for us. We need some help, but we've got some help. I'm going to praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. We see. Marty, we see the same thing. In, in Ezekiel, uh, uh, what do I want? Exodus chapter 17. Minister Aaron, you know that story. Israel had just come out of Egypt. They didn't know how to fight yet. They didn't really have a real army. They're just trying to learn how to be an independent nation. They were not skilled in warfare. And the Amalekites attacked them. And, and, and Moses, he kind of wasn't sure what to do. And the Lord said, go ahead and send Joshua down there. Tell him, go on down there and fight. It's going to be all right. And he told Moses, what you do, you just come to the top of the mountain and just raise your hands. Come on, somebody raise your hands. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord told Moses, just raise your hands. And said, as long as you keep your hands up, you're going to win. Come on, give God a hand praise. And the word of God said, as long as Moses. Come on, somebody help me praise. Somebody help me praise. Come on, I, I know the Amalekites are down there trying to kill me, but I don't have to go down there. As long as I keep my hands up, my hands are lifted up in praise. My hands are lifted up trusting the Lord. I, I don't know what to do, but I know I can praise God and I can get through here. I don't know where they're coming from, but I know I can praise God and get through here. Come on, somebody lift up your hands. God said, while your hands are up, he'll put your enemies on the run. Come on and give God a praise in here and understand what God is showing us. Your praise is a weapon that works. Somebody shout hallelujah. What do you see in that story? People of God. The word of God said this. Brother George, I'm so glad to see you. Glad to see you, woman of God. The scripture said, as long as Moses kept his hands up, tell, tell your neighbor, just keep your hands up. Tell them, I know you don't know what to do. Just keep your hands up. Just keep on giving God praise when nothing makes sense. Just keep your hands up. Just keep your hands up. Come on, put your hands up. All you scared people, put your hands up. All you quiet people who are too cool to praise God, put your hands up. 
Come on, there's your victory right there. Now give God a praise. Now give God a praise. While your hands were up in obedience, while you were acknowledging God, God was at your house, God was in your bank, God was at your doctor's office, God was working because you were giving him glory. As long as you keep your hands up. Come on, somebody. Keep them up. They didn't know how to fight. They weren't experienced soldiers. They had a pretend army. But the Lord said, you don't have to be that good. All you got to do, just trust me. And the scripture said, as long as Moses kept his hands up, said, as long as he did that, the Lord just, Joshua and them just, beat the Amalekites down. And then, after a while, because he was human, Scripture said Moses' arms got tired, and he thought he could take a break. Tell your neighbor, don't take a break. <laughs> His arms got tired. The Word of God tells us this. <laughs> he said, I'm tired. We're winning anyway, so it'll be all right if I stop praising God for a while. Church said, as soon as his arms came down, the devil started winning. The Amalekites started winning. So then God made a way. Come on, I'm going to get down here and you show them. Come on up here, Deacon Miller. Come on, Joe. Thank you, Aaron. And so when once his arms got tired, he couldn't do it no more. He called for some help. And they came and helped us. Yes, 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 yes. Come, on. Come on here. Come on here. What did God say? They held his hands up all day till they're going down the sun. And as long as their hands are, you might be tired. I might be weary, but my hands are still up. Come on, give God a hand play. I might be tired, but my hands are still up. I know you're tired, but God said keep your hands up. Because your praise is warfare. Come on, somebody. It's a weapon. Somebody give God a praise. Give God a real praise. Not good enough. Somebody give God a real praise. Touch three people. Tell them, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. I know you're going through, but keep your hands up. Keep your praise going up. Keep your worship going up. As long as you keep your hands up. And I'll help you. When you get tired, just call me. I'll come over where you are. And I'll hold one hand up. And I'll bring Bishop Marty. She'll hold the other hand up. As long as you keep on praising God. We do get tired. We are human. We do have emotional limits. Physical limits. Financial limits. Psychological limits. We get weary. We're human. But the Lord will provide someone to help us. Tell two or three people, you got some help around here. Tell them, I'll be glad to hold your hands up. Tell somebody, I can see you look a little tired right now. Let me grab your arm. Come on, somebody, reach out and grab somebody's arm and put it up. Somebody that looks like their hands might be a little bit tired. I know we're not going to let the devil, I'm not going to let the devil defeat you. I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold your hand up until you feel better. Come on, give God a hand. I'm going to hold your hands up until your strength comes back. Come on, somebody. I'm going to hold your hands up till God, come on, till God gives you another anointing. I'm going to hold your hands up. We're not going to let the enemy win this battle. I'm with you. Your praise. Is a weapon. Sometime we we'll need someone. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of one body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It's His will that every need will be supplied. You're important to me. I need you to survive. Beautiful song beautiful principle of truth. The word of the Lord shows us in Psalm number 149, go there for just a moment, what a profound revelation it is. I hope that you stream this service out onto the internet to your friends of Facebook and YouTube and wherever you know people. There's a lot of people that need to understand that your praise is a weapon. 
The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't fight with knives and we don't grab machetes and we don't use bombs and, and uh, all kind of things like that. But we fight because we're in a fight. And the scripture said, be sober, be vigilant, because your enemy, as a roaring lion, is walking around seeking to grab you by the throat. I've been watching on my internet on, I think it's Instagram, I keep seeing all these animals eating one another, lions jumping out of the bushes and grabbing animals by the throat, by the throat and, and tear them up. Once the, land, once the lion grabs you, there ain't no getting away, it's too late then. You shouldn't have been there. <laughs> Once he gets you, it's, it's pretty much over. Amen. And so the scripture said, be sober. Be watchful. Matthew 26, the Lord told the disciples, watch and pray. Watch the devil. Watch those demons that come after your mind. Watch those crazy thoughts that come out of nowhere. Out of the blue, some crazy lust, some crazy temptation. You weren't thinking about nothing like that. Peter said, be sober, be watchful. Your enemy is stalking you right now. While you're sitting in church, the devil is watching you and thinking about what he can do to damage your relationship with God weaken you, to destroy you. We're in a fight. Paul said we have weapons, but they're not carnal. They're not the normal things that people fight with. One of them is praise and worship. When you're in the house of the Lord, you must engage in praise and worship. Praise, worship, is how you engage with God. The fact that you're sitting, listening to me talk doesn't mean you're interacting with God. A lot of people sit and hear a sermon and they are no more interacting with God than the man in the moon. I may as well be singing a love song for all the good you're getting while you're just sitting there with your legs crossed and maybe daydreaming. But the moment you reach out to God, the moment you tune in and begin to tell the Lord, I love you, Lord, I'm listening. Lord, I hear you speaking. Lord, I feel your presence. Come on here. Lord, I'm not just here to hear a man deliver a message. I'm here to interact with the living God. Is there anybody here that wants to have an encounter with you? You want to feel his presence today. You want to touch God. You want to grab a hold of God. You want to interact with God. The way you interact with God is praise, not listening to a sermon, but giving God praise. Come on here, somebody. That's why the devil wants you to sit there and not do nothing because you're not interacting with God as long as you're just sitting there listening to me. But when you start clapping your hands and giving God glory and responding to God, honey, things happen in the spirit realm. Somebody give God a hand praise. Somebody grab a hold of Jesus and give him glory. That's how you interact with God. You don't interact with God because I preached. I could be preaching. You could be sitting there thinking about your old boyfriend. <laughs> as has been done. <laughs> but the way you interact with God is praise and worship. You reach out to him. You connect on purpose. It's so easy to daydream through a worship service. What happened in the service today? Nothing. What'd you get out of it? Nothing. He got up and he screamed a lot, but I didn't get nothing. That's because you didn't make any effort to interact with God. The Lord was here for all the rest of us. Come on. <laughs> all the rest of us got something. You didn't get nothing because you didn't want nothing. That's on you. Interacting with God is something that we have to do intentionally. How many want more Jesus? How, how many want to encounter Jesus in this service today? Psalm 149, I'm going to be done after this. Psalm 149 talks about the weapon of praise. Look at it as I just maybe kind of talk you through it. Look at, look at it, get, get it in your Bible, go with me. 
It opens the verse one, praise the Lord. Then it says, praise God musically. Sing unto the Lord and keep writing new songs to praise him. And do that in the congregation of the saints. Sing to God when other people are gathered together with you. And collectively, you're to sing in order to praise God. Verse 2, have joy when you do it. Let Israel rejoice in the God that made us. That the children of Zion, the people who have a spiritual heritage, a spiritual legacy, let us be joyful. Let's be emotional in our relationship with God. Verse number three, praise his name in the dance. Get up and move physically to praise God. And then sing praises and put musical instruments along with it, the timbrel and the harp. Why? Verse 4. Because the Lord gets pleasure out of your praise. How many know that God enjoys your praise? The scripture said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. How many know that God likes when you sing unto him even if you can't sing? You got the worst voice in your family. But touch your neighbor, tell him, it sounds good to Jesus. He enjoys it when you interact with him. Because that's what you were made for. Humanity was created to praise God. To fellowship with him. That's the only excuse you got to be here. He didn't make you to make money. He didn't make you to go to ball games. He created Adam and Eve. He made man to praise him and worship him. That's what, that's your whole purpose to be here. If you're not praising God, then you don't make no sense at all. You might as well not even be here. But when you praise God, you're doing what man, come on somebody, help me get it. You're doing what humanity was created to do. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and tell them, that's why we're here. If you're not praising God, you don't make no sense at all. He didn't make you to go to the beach. He created Adam and Eve for an interactive relationship. And the scripture lets us know that he gets happy when we do what we were created to do. Verse number four. Look at it there. The Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Oh, there's so much in that. You couldn't even talk about that phrase. Verse number five. So let the saints be emotional in the presence of the Lord. Let them sing all through the night on their beds. I know most of y'all, you love to pray in the middle of the night. God wakes you up and you just start talking to God. I had a beautiful pattern of that. Minister Hayes, Minister Matkin, Minister Edna, mother, used to just, my mother, used to just walk through the house all day long just talking to God. Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, she's cooking that, those sweet potato pies. Lord, you're magnificent. God, you're awesome. I love you. And, and wasn't nobody there. She wasn't trying to perform for nobody. She wasn't trying to win no brownie points. She just was in love with you. Anybody in love with Jesus? Anybody not ashamed to be in love with Jesus? You can talk to him riding down for you. I just love you, Lord. Thank you. I didn't get in that accident. Thank you that I got gas in my tank. Thank you. Thank you. My heart is still beating and my lungs are still working. Thank God I'm in my right mind. Thank God I got a job to go to. Thank you, Lord. Just want to say thanks. Just interacting with God. Let the saints sing aloud on their beds. Verse 6 is very important. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. What a strange verse. Verse 6. Look at that. He said, loud praise constitutes a sword. Yeah. Touch your neighbor, tell them your praise is a sword. Yeah. Tell somebody your praise is a weapon. And when you start slinging your weapon, the devils run. The demons get scared. Oh, oh, watch out. He's swinging that thing. Pack up. Don't bother him right now. He's giving God praise. I hear a high praise. Come on. A high praise means a loud praise. Not, not being quiet. Not worrying what somebody thinks. Move over. I'm about to shout right now. You shouldn't have sat here if you didn't want to have church. This is the row where people praise God. Everybody on this row, 
Come on. We all praise God on this road. Come on here. Honey, you're on the wrong road. This is a praising road. Come on here, somebody. Get God a hand. We're the loud people. This is the loud group. Somebody give God a praise. The high praises. The high praises. The loud praises. Somebody give God a loud praise. I know the devil don't want you to do it. Somebody give God a loud praise. Someone who's not ashamed, give God a loud praise. The high praises of God in my mouth. The high praises. The high praise. The high praise. Amen. The word says, the high praise. Be seated, dear ones. I'm almost done. The high praise of God is a two-edged sword. Cuts the devils. Your praise cuts the demons. Your praise makes them back up because your praise hurts them. Whew. Preach, apostle. Your praise damages them. Your praise injures demons. God, I wish I knew how to preach. Your praise hurts the devil. Your praise tears into his flesh. Your praise makes him bleed. Your praise causes him pain. I will bless the Lord at all times. I think I'm going to cut some devils. Come on, give God a hand praise. The high praise of God in my mouth. So you can't stop me from praising. Because there's too much at stake. There's too much to win. I got to praise God. There's too much to win by praising him. The loud praise, it cuts the demic, demons. It cuts demonic ties. Paul said it pulls down strongholds. What the devil's been building for 10 years in your life. The Lord said, tell you your praise today. Pulled it all the way down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He'd been working. He had blueprints. He had a contractor. Come on. He had subcontractors. He built it all up. But God said, your praise is pulling it down right now. Come on and give God a hand raise. You're tearing up stuff. Come on. You're tearing up demonic stuff. You're tearing up. You're tearing up demonic habits. You're tearing up all kind of obsessions. Come on. Give God a hand praise. You're tearing it up with your praise. Your praise. The high praise. I'm just about done. Touch your neighbor. Tell him, I got it. I got it. Tell him he could go ahead and stop right now. Because I got it. Look at him. I'm done. Verse 6. The high praises, loud praises of God in your mouth. And it is a truth. Now, look, you know he's talking about, he's talking metaphorically and spiritually. He's not telling you to come to church and praise loudly with a great big sword in your hand. In fact, you can't come in here with the sword. We have security in here. If you tried to come in here with a two-edged sword, you wouldn't get very far. Because we got security. Tell your neighbor, we got security. So when he talks about a two-edged sword, he's not talking about a literal sword. How many know you can't really cut the devil with a sword? But when you praise God, come on here. Come on here. Get out of here, demon. Get out of here, fear. Get out of here, sickness. Come on. Get out of here, anxiety. Get out of here, low self-esteem. Come on, give God a hand. I'm here to cut some stuff. sword is not literal, Bishop Durgan. It's a, it's a spiritual sword. Paul said, above all, taking the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit realm, which is when you use the word of God. We end this beautiful 149th Psalm. You're allowed, as you praise God, it permits you to execute vengeance 
upon the demon spirits and punishment on all the kingdom of darkness. Look at verse 8. You bind demons with chains and the principalities of the demon world with iron fetters. You execute judgment on the ones to whom God has decided and designed judgment. The Lord has already judged principalities and powers. You're the one that puts the devil in his place. And the way you put him in his place, the way you get him out of your life is with your weapon of praise. Isaiah said that the Lord has given me the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. When those demonic spirits of fear and depression and habituation and addiction and obsessions, weakness, all those evil demonic things to come to damage your quality of life and to make you miserable rather than full of joy. When those things come, you have a weapon. You have many weapons. But the weapon that God has focused us on right now is a weapon of praise, a high, loud praises of God in your mouth. So you're walking down the street, and you can interact with the Lord walking down the street. You're in your car, just riding in your car. You don't need a preacher. Tell your neighbor, I don't need a preacher to praise God. Tell somebody, I don't need that man to say nothing to me. Tell him, I know how to praise God for myself. I can praise God in my own car. Come on, somebody. I can praise God in the bathroom at work. I can praise God in the classroom. Anytime you take a notion, you can interact with the God that loves you and died for you. How many want to praise God? How many, how many want to praise God? Your praise is a great weapon. And so what is the application? You have to make a decision that you're going to adopt a regular habit of praise. You don't need anointed, sincere minister Matthew Anderson to get up here and get you worked up and tell you to stand up and sing loud. You don't need Minister Simeon and Brother Dustin and uh, dr Brother Drummer, uh, David, and a beautiful bass player. You don't need nobody to, to, to uh, rev you up. Tell somebody, I know how to praise God for myself. <laughs> now, it's wonderful when we come together. It's a good thing. God likes it. He said use instruments and use song and all the rest of that. But you don't need any of that right. when you want to be in the presence of Jesus. And I told Bishop Marty something the Lord showed me I had never seen before. Many times, the reason people don't encounter God is because they think it takes like half an hour. I tell somebody, it don't take half an hour. You know what we do? We, well, I really need to talk to God. I need to get in touch with God. But I don't have no time right now. I got to be somewhere. I got to be there in 15 minutes. And uh, so I don't really have no time to pray. I'm just, I try to get to it later. Then night come, and you're sleepy, and you fall asleep in front of television, didn't talk to God then either. Wake up and, oh, my goodness, it's late. I don't have time to talk to God right now. i got to go to work. So we always think that interaction with God is really complicated. But i got news for you. You can touch God in about 10 seconds. Come on. All you can, Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. I just want to say, I'm in a rush. I'm busy. It's a busy day. But, Lord, I love you. I'm yours. I thank you. You're my Savior. You're my God. I give you glory. I feel your anointing right now. I feel you right now, Lord, on the way to my appointment. Come on, somebody. Give God a hand. You can praise God anywhere you are, any time of day. You don't have to roll out of bed at 4 in the morning. You can. <laughs> but you don't have to. When God wakes you up at four in the morning, you can just roll over and say, Lord, I just love you. I just want you to know I love you. I'm sleepy right now, Lord. I'll see you later, but I do love you, Lord. I want you to know I hear you. I need you. I trust you. You're my deliverer. Come on, give God a hand. You're my victory. You're my joy. You're my everything. I'm committed to you, Lord. I'll never leave you. Nothing will ever take me away. From your presence. Let's stand, please. Thank you so much. Let's stand. 
I want altar workers to come. Those who are ministry licensed, please come and stand. And that, then we'll pray for one another. All, altar workers, all of you that are ministers, just come and stand and face the congregation. And then we will offer prayer because there will be blessings released right now as we come to the altar. And so I want you to come and receive prayer wherever you are. Would you come and get a blessing? I don't know what you can benefit from. Maybe you need a financial blessing. Come do that. Maybe you got sickness in your body. Come do that. Come on, come on, come on, dear one. Come on, dear one. All right. Maybe you got a family problem and you need the Lord to, to move in that area of your life. Come on and get that. Come on. Don't, don't be shy, please. Don't, don't hesitate. Please don't draw back. And can I say, don't pretend that you don't need anything from the Lord because we all do. Every one of us needs prayer for one issue or another. And what a privilege it is to have somebody to pray with you. It's good that there's someone here anointed and sincere and they're ready to pray with you. Wherever to touch and agree concerning anything that you ask, it shall be done for you of the Father in heaven. There's some on this side. They come on this side. Over on this side. Bless you, daughter. Bless you. Yo, can we pray with you? Please let us do that. Please let us pray with you. Let us pray with you. Let us pray. The Lord is hearing us. We're interacting with Jesus on purpose. We're all to you. Everything I give to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Holding nothing. Somebody who can sing, come help me sing. Withholding nothing. I surrender. Thank you, Brother Corey. You're all to you. Everything I give to you. Everything I give to you with holding take it yes sir thank you thank you with holding nothing yes i surrender i surrender to you surrender all to you everything I give holding nothing holding nothing myself away give myself away give myself away give myself away so you can use me give myself away give myself away wants prayer come on who else will come and receive from the Lord while the blessings are being poured out you can come now and be blessed come on and let's touch and agree let's get something from the Lord this afternoon let's claim something let's put a petition before the Lord touch and agree together so you can use me. My life is not my own. My life, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself 
I give myself to you. My life is not my own. Life is not my own. To you I Oh, I give myself. Give myself. Give myself away. I give myself away. So you, in a little while, we'll close this altar call. Who else will come and receive a blessing before we close the altar call? Who else will come and receive a blessing? Who else will come and receive a blessing? We always want to make a clear appeal for salvation. If there's anyone that's not been born again born of the water and born of the spirit uh, please come at this time if you don't know exactly what that means certainly come and let us counsel together amen is there anyone there must be someone in this nice audience that has not yet been born of the water and spirit would you counsel with your neighbor wherever you are make sure everybody around you is already saved already born again just just ask them it's all right ask that person ask them we'd love to see someone baptized this afternoon and somebody filled with the holy spirit the precious holy ghost that's what the lord wants that's what the lord wants who's not saved already bring somebody maybe a child maybe you're here for the first time don't be intimidated by that you're free to come and get something from the Lord your life will change forever give us just another minute who else who else who else who else who else who else all right we believe everybody is saved amen so you may go ahead and take your seat. Altar workers can be seated. Those that are ministering can continue to minister. Let's all give the Lord a hand praise for what he's doing right now with these men and women of God at the altar. Thank you, Lord. 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 Come on, give God, come on, give God a real praise for it. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Thank you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Amen. The Lord is the most precious thing in life. And so now this past week, uh, Mr. Simpson died on Friday. And some of y'all remember all the question about the football player. And then some people think he committed a murder. And, and some people say he didn't do it. And everybody has a right to their own opinion. But at the end of it all, we all end up in the presence of the Lord. Somebody say amen to that. We all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We all got to stand before God and answer. Now, all of us have done some things wrong. How many people in here have ever committed a sin? Let me see your hand. Oh, I thought that was all of us. I just want to be sure. So... Thank God that there's a God who forgives. Somebody give God a hand praise because he's able to forgive us. He's able to forgive us no matter what we've done, no matter how awful are the things in our past. Help me with that. Touch and tell them the past is the past. And tell them you ain't got nothing on me. Tell somebody I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Now come on, give God a hand praise if you know that's true. Praise God. We, don't, we can't judge anybody. Scripture said we're to judge ourselves. But I know one thing. Everybody over here, everybody over here, and all of us over here, we're going to all have to stand before the Lord at one time. And I just want to be ready. Who wants to be ready when Jesus comes back? I just want to be ready. I don't want to play with God. I'm not going to play with God. I play with toys. I play with footballs. But I'm not going to play with God. All right. It's time to give the Lord some money. Give God a hand praise for offertory. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to worship with our tithes, with our offerings. And I give through my phone, like most of you. 
So get your phone, get however you're going to worship the Lord today as we come to the end of the service. And then um, I will be teaching tonight uh, on uh, my Facebook page at 6 p.m. And so look forward to meeting me there on my Facebook page. I, I hope that many of you were able to share the service on today and stream it out to others. And uh, God will bless you for doing it. Let's all tithe faithfully. Let's be tithers. Malachi asked, will a man rob God? Don't rob God. How do we rob you, Lord? In tithes and offerings, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. So let's, let's do the right thing. Let's pay the tithe and then offer God a grateful offering because he's been so good to us. I want to thank those of you that showed kindness to the Castile family. Bishop Martin and I, and some of you were at the uh, homegoing service for uh, Brian on uh, Friday. It was an absolutely beautiful service. They were expecting about 100 people, and they had more than 300 people show up. Somebody give God praise for that. That's wonderful. It was a tremendous turnout. And uh, he was so loved. And... Uh, and it was a beautiful service. I want to thank you for your love for him and love for the family, love for Sister Cindy and all the children. So thank you for your kindness. All right. Uh, are you ready to stand, everybody? Are you ready to stand? All right. I don't want to rush you. Maybe we're ready to stand. Let's all stand and join in the center aisle, please. Uh, Bishop Burr, I think you were going to say something about the groups Today, is that true? We're going to talk about the uh, discipleship groups. Would you come and do that? And then you can dismiss us, Pastor uh, Darren. We'll have Bishop Burr uh, to dismiss us on today. All right. And we ask that everybody stand and everybody crowd into the center aisle. Come on, that's what we do. We all come down the center to bring our gift to the Lord. It's just the way we do it here. And thank you for doing that. Bishop Marty and I want to stand at the door and greet you on the way out. So if you can, come by that way and just greet us. And I promise we won't keep you long. Amen. All right. You say what they're going to say about the group's names. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just want to say we do have discipleship groups now posted on the, the Shield of Faith website. So if you want to connect with a group, please go to the Shield of Faith website and we have groups meeting during the week. We have up to 27 groups now, and those of you that have not to uh, put that information, uh, do you want me to pray for the offering? How does this work? Let's go ahead and pray over the offering too. Amen. God, we just thank you for our, the gifts before us here, and uh, bless us as we give, Lord, and return it manifold, 100 manifold back to the giver, Lord God, here in Jesus' name. Amen. But uh, bless the... Uh, the discipleship groups want to sign up, and those of you who need to get the information over to us, if you could text me today, that would be much appreciated, much appreciated, in Jesus' name. Thank you for your attendance here. May the Lord bless us as we give here today and we leave, uh, and have a great day in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Thank you. <laughs>